All right, and we're we're live. Uh, thank you for stopping by Indie Dave Comics. I, of course, am your host, Indie Dave. Uh, part of my uh, show that I've been doing lately is uh, learning to draw, uh, teaching myself to draw from books. So we're going to review a uh, book today. We're going to do a little sketching, and we're talking here with who are we uh, here with? We're you're here with Swedes today. All right, and we're going to talk a little bit about his project Oddity. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's got some work to show us, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. Uh, we're going to go over some of the the stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about the book drawing comics the marvel way uh and then we're gonna do a little review of that and then we're gonna talk about some of the stuff that's in that book uh there's some cool like kind of comic book theory stuff that's in there as far as uh how you want to draw stuff which may seem controversial today <laughs> actually uh, uh my overall view of the book one it's probably not a beginning drawing book if you're if you're just learning to draw i think probably uh, you might want to have at least some of your basic fundamentals first. And then this book is, is a good one to jump on to, to uh, start learning more dynamic posing for comic books and specifically, and it says to draw the Marvel way. And specifically it's, it's almost like, and this is going to sound bad, but it really isn't. It's kind of uh, focuses on kind of efficiency because uh, the Marvel comics made their comics in the same way, sort of, like McDonald's make makes cheeseburgers. They have, they have well, they have a specific recipe uh -huh. as far as storytelling and the way they want the characters to look. And it's not specifically like every character and every artist has to draw exactly the same, but they have a certain style that they want everybody to meet. And a lot of it again has to do with efficiency because yeah. they want to put out a monthly book. And that's that's the point of learning to draw the Marvel way to be a Marvel artist. Uh, like I said, probably I'm I don't know for sure if guys like uh, like uh, uh, Liefeld or McFarlane how much they used this book, how much they actually referenced it. I mean, yeah. I'm sure they did to a point uh, because oh, there yeah. is a, there is a lot of good stuff in it, but mm -hmm. it's not super stylish. Like a yeah. Sam Keith or you know that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. no, so, it gives uh, you. It gives. You, it looks like it gives you a lot of the the general basics of of drawing, um, starting with a mannequin and you know doing uh, expressive sketches and stuff like that to kind of capture movement and different poses and stuff. And I mean that's that's a lot of basic stuff that you you learn in drawing in college or you know, high school, whatever, and, you know, so it's, it's solid stuff. Um, I don't know how in depth they go or anything, but yeah, the, the old way of drawing, uh, you know, after the nineties, you can tell it kind of, I mean, there's still some artists that, that follow that, yeah. that and, style, but. Yeah. And there's nothing to say if there's anything wrong with this, or yeah. if you learn from this book that you're going to not be the best artist out there someday or whatever. But yeah. this, definitely, it, it, if anything, if nothing else, it's a, this book, uh, I think it was 1978, 1977 yeah. here. Mm -hmm. another, great, another great thing about this book is it was all, it's all narrated, essentially, by Stan Lee. It's like he wrote yeah. all the narrative. John Buscema did all the artsy stuff and, mm -hmm. and covers all that. But it's, you can't not, you can't read this book in any other voice except for Stan Lee's voice. <laughs> when, when you're when you're reading it, I mean, I'm like I said, there is there's a lot of good stuff, and obviously a lot of people recommend it. I recommend it. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, here's the there's a whole list of your tools, stuff that you're going yeah. to need. Uh, there's I'm going to go ahead and just stick it on mine real quick, just to kind of freeze frame it there. All right. So yeah. So there's some tools here, your erasers, and all the, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, uh, let's see. Uh, there's a, a, a whole section that's just, uh, you know, it points out right here. Uh, what is this? What is this called? That's the title. This mm -hmm. is called a word balloon. You know, it, it covers all your, those kind of comic book basics. Yeah. Uh, if you look here, it says, okay, this will be a close up shot. Try to get it under my camera there. Uh, this will be a medium shot. This is a long shot or a panoramic long shot. 
So, I mean, there's, it, it covers all those basics as far as industry stuff, straight industry stuff. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, making an object look real, and that, a lot of that is perspective kind of things. Uh, and let's see. Uh, let's see. And there's all kinds of like weird machines and cars and vehicles. I mean, it, it's all it's all the basics. Uh, let me see. I want to get to the figure drawing, the whole perspective section, which is good because perspective. Uh, I mean, I I don't know if there's advanced perspective, but the, I mean, it's it, it's an important thing to know, and it's not it's not really all that difficult to cover. It's it's hard for some people, and I haven't started it, so I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, it's going to be easy yeah. for me. Uh, let's see the can, figure. We're gonna, we're can gonna, you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, with with perspective, there there definitely is an advanced perspective. Like you start off with like one point, and that's kind of like you know the train tracks. Mm -hmm. um, everyone does it. You learn the train tracks or the road, and it converges the farther you go. You know that's your simple one point, and then you get into two point, and that's where you've got two vanishing points, and it makes your you know your scene more dynamic and. And then you get into three point perspective and you know it's uh as long as you don't get too overwhelmed and you take your time it's it's easy stuff uh it's easy stuff to pick up on and um you know it's uh it's very left brain kind of kind of stuff like if that's is that it left brain like if you're good at math or you know it's drawing on the right side of the brain. We were just talking about that book. Is yeah, that, that's that? more of the creative, I guess, side. Yeah, but uh, anyways, right, as long you as you don't get, you want to get on the math side. side. Yeah, when you're uh, when you're doing structural structural drawing, perspective drawing, and stuff. Um, yeah, which could be. I mean, it, it it's a challenge for me. I use uh, I do a lot of my perspective drawing on my iPad and that has just, I mean, it's made me uh, understand perspective a lot better, but it also has made me like not want to go back to doing it the traditional way where, you know, when you do it the traditional way, you've got your giant, you, you need a giant drawing table mm -hmm. and you're drawing, you know, to get a, a good dynamic perspective uh you need to put your perspective or your uh, vanishing points off way to off the, the side yeah. yeah way off and then you know but uh with computers now you know you can pick a vanishing point and you know and then your lines automatically go to it it's I mean, it's cheating definitely <laughs> but you know there's no such thing as cheating except in digital drawing where you can you know just copy your eye and put it on your oh, side <laughs> like uh, pull the gray gland, you know, <laughs> and trace everybody. Trace yeah, the board stars and trace them. Exactly, that's ex exactly what he did. Uh, and, uh, when I was younger, I saw his work before I I knew about you know Photoshop or using computers or anything. I saw his work and I was like, this stuff's amazing. Like I can't like mm -hmm. you know, and I was like, he must he draws this out of his head like. Yeah, you know, I was very young and stupid at the time. Now I, I can't stand looking at his stuff. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah. I'm gonna do a little bit of the figure type stuff today uh, on my yeah. my own personal journey. Mm -hmm. You know, I hate it when people call it that. I'm on my. <laughs> I just don't like the way that sounds. <laughs> All right. But yeah, I'm, so in my, I'm gonna do a little bit of figure stuff today. I really need to go over some of the stuff I've done before, but uh, yeah. we're gonna do a little bit and then I'll practice my spare time. Kind of. Let's see, so we're doing uh, fig chapter four here is a uh, figure drawing, mm -hmm. drawing the figure, and it's gonna go over proportions. And for those of you who are watching, who are less versed in art than I am, and I'm sure that's a lot fewer than I think, uh, the basic body is, uh, they say eight and three quarters, Heads, yeah, tall. That's and yeah. and some and I've seen some books where it's eight and a half, and some where it's straight eight, some where it's nine. So or you could, I mean, it varies a little bit, but I think if everybody in your books are to the same proportion, 
yeah, depending on how you draw. And it's pretty close, and everybody doesn't look all super goofy unless you're drawing really cartoony. Then yeah. that, between eight and nine, I think, is, is what people go by. Yeah, that's uh, that's generally what you hear. And, and then if you're like uh, Liefeld, it's like 12 heads or something. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna, hold on, I'm gonna pull up the stream here. Something um, wild like that. Yeah. I, <laughs> well, I'm just looking. I'm looking at the the live chat, and uh, we get the medal here, as always. The medal always subscribes, and he always likes. Uh, let's see. And he says, unless you're possessed, aren't all journeys personal? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so, that always sounds so like hippie to me. Oh, I'm on my personal journey. Uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. How do, how do I pull up the like? I've got the group chat chat off to the side on my screen, but I do not. I, I see, actually, like, yeah, I don't see the regular chat. I actually like like I'm on my laptop, and yeah. I have my phone pulled up. Oh, so you're. I'm actually doing two different things. Yeah, that's how I see it. Okay. There's probably a way to do it, but I, I still haven't figured it out. But yeah, no, I got my iPad. My I got my iPad to the side. I can pull it up and stuff. Yeah, I just, like, I'm not the most savvy at uh, all the, you know, communication stuff. I mean, I use tons of programs and all that, but I don't, you know, I don't do too many streams or – you know, well, I have uh, Mrs. Like on, like and she, on her computer, she monitors it and then she just kind of tries to be quiet and points at the screen. <laughs> yeah, tell me that somebody's talking. So that, that's how I know. So that's how she keeps <laughs> me in mind. Well, it's awesome that you got a co pilot like that. Yeah, well, that, I mean, I guess she likes it too. She, yeah, uh, she, she starts recognizing everybody who shows up. <laughs> oh, excuse me, and my drink. I got my stiff Arnold Palmer. Oh, stiff! Yeah, it's got a, uh, it's got a uh, iced tea vodka and uh, lemonade. Yeah, see, like, I can't drink on a live stream. If I do that, then it like, I go from like an introvert to like just this sloppy extrovert, <laughs> and like. 2.5 drinks it's really awful <laughs> i you know, i always set up to like drink a lot but i think the most i've ever had is like three drinks and maybe we did we i think we did one stream where i drank you know quite a bit and it was yeah. funny because like everybody was done and everybody left and like hey goodbye thanks and at the end for like just two hours i just rambled on <laughs> <laughs> did you did you go back and listen to your ramblings Oh my God! It's still up there somewhere. It was the, the <laughs> All Star stream, I think. I had Doug the Naple on, the Nerd Wonder, and a couple of other guys. <laughs> that's hel that's hilarious. Though. Yeah, yeah. Wait, like wait, I, wait, I rather wait. not. Yeah, go ahead. I rather not have my drunken uh, rants ever recorded or anything like that. Say my like kids, sometimes, what's that? My kids got a kick out of it. <laughs> I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. You know, my thing is, I'll I'll have a few drinks, and then I get on like social media, and then I just start like thinking I'm saying hilarious things, or you know, I start going off, <laughs> and then the next day I'll have like all these messages from people I don't know, and you know, I'm just like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't do that anymore. Yeah. And then I do it. <laughs> it just keeps happening. Yeah, I try not to. I don't. I don't really drink that much. I drink on streams, I guess. And usually, yeah. it's usually right now. It's like one or two, just enough to lose yeah. a little bit. Um, let me see what I got. Oh, no. oh, you know what? I got one of these. Uh, streams, I guess. And usually, yeah. it's usually right now. It's like, oh, oh, I hear an echo. Yeah, that was that was all me because I was pulling it up. <laughs> Pulling up the stream, and my sound was super high. Sorry about that. No problem. Yeah, I'm pulling out my photo blue pencil that I got the other day. 
I haven't, oh. I haven't had a chance to use it yet, so we're going to bust that out today. All right, so uh, let's see about this book. All right, so eight and a half or eight and three quarters or nine, depending mm -hmm. on who you talk to. Uh, let's see. We'll do what does Stan Lee have to say about the figure? There might be some more important, or there might be more important than figure drawing and comic book artwork, but we sure don't know what it is. Everything is based on how you draw the characters, the heroes, villains, and the never ending hordes of supporting stars. Superhero comic books are the stories of people, period. And we're going to try to teach you everything you ought to know about drawing those people and drawing them as dramatically and heroically as possible. Let's start with an average Joe like you or me. Most average guys are about six and a half heads tall. But take a look at the sketch of Reed Richards and notice that he's eight and three quarters heads tall. If we draw a hero, he's got to look like a hero. He should be of heroic proportions. Unfortunately, the normal six and a half head tall proportions would make him seem somewhat dumpy when drawn <laughs> in a Marvel mag. All right. So uh, you, you can you, you can hear you can hear. I mean, I I'm terrible at his voice. You, no, can no, hear, no. you, you get that point. You can hear him saying it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Needless to say, we also arrow. Naturally, as we're soon about to see, the male is drawn much more angular than the female. Yeah. Controversial is that men and women are different. <laughs> Let's see. Another good point to remember, the elbows fall just a little bit below the waist. Mm -hmm. This is true of both men and women. All right. And if you pull out a Hogarth book, I think they will go over uh, – I've got one. I think they go over, like, all of the little measurements, yeah. like where the fingers fall specifically and all that kind of Dude, stuff. Dude, I don't even know if this is PC these days. I don't think – you're going to get – Oh, wait till we get to this movie part. You're going to get kicked off of YouTube <laughs> for this stuff. <laughs> Let's see. And speaking of women, where would Reed Richards be without his stunning Sue? Notice that she too is eight and three quarters heads tall, with her hips much wider in relation to her shoulders. Can you oh, believe this? What? It's almost like oh my God. <laughs> it's like she was uh and they were, she was designed to to give childbirth or something. To look like, different than a man. <laughs> Have you seen uh, Zach, Zach's videos about how like there's a there's a specific body type now for women and all women have it? Uh, and, like all the it's like an almost man proportions, but just slightly. <laughs> I don't know how he doesn't really describe it, but if you look at all the women, they all look exactly the same. Yeah, and they got like yeah. the square boot, and you uh -huh. know. Yeah, dude. I don't know, let's. See. It's, it's, like, it's all insane. <laughs> it's all so crazy. All right. Obviously, we do not emphasize muscles on a female. Have you seen yeah. the new She Hulk? Though <laughs> uh, we it's assume so she's not a weakling. Go ahead. What were you saying? Uh, I was just saying it's so bad. It's, it's, oh, yeah. It's so ridiculous. They, just took, they took a picture, they took a Hulk drawing, and they put a, like the woman head on yeah. it. Yeah. They just gave the Hulk, Hulk long hair. It's a Hulk and drag, dude. Yeah. Let's see. Obviously, we do not have. Uh, let's see where is that. We've also found that it's prefer preferable to draw a female's head slightly smaller than a male's. In yeah. fact, she's generally drawn somewhat smaller all over, except <laughs> for the bosom. <laughs> except it's... for the bosom. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's see. As a guy, you might remember that the hand on both male and female always fall mid-thigh on the body when the figure is standing. So right about, you see right there. Yeah. All right. So that's the controversial kind of stuff. Yeah. All right. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to read all this, but there's different, I mean, there's different sections. So if we're going to go to the part about the stick figures, so I think that's what I'll be working on a little bit today. All right, so there, and you can see even the thing is actually the thing would be actually less than uh, less than the eight. Yeah, uh, let's see, let's see, it's pretty squatty. Eight. Yeah, but I think he looks bigger also because he's got a bigger head. Yeah, and because the, the the you know the kingpin never looks short when compared to anybody. He's he's only so many heads high. He's five heads high. 
Like yeah. he's a bigger guy and a taller guy because he's got a bigger head. Yeah. All right. So let's see. We're doing that. All right. We'll get to the stick figure section here, and then uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about oddity. All, All right. right. So here, let's see. Look at the first thing a fledgling artist needs. Oh, look. The first thing a fledgling artist needs is self confidence, and here's the way to get it. Most anyone can draw a stick figure, even Irving Forbush. I think that's the, what was that the, the the tin pan head guy. What was he? Irv, it says Irvin Forbush. Wasn't he Forbush man? Wasn't that the the pot on the head guy? <laughs> and the pajamas that used to be in all like the Marvel, uh, like their previews. He was it was like their goofy yeah. superhero guy. Uh, let's see. They're simple. They're fun, <laughs> and most important of all, they're the easiest way for you to get the action and the position you want for your character. Mm -hmm. Don't try to do a complete drawing all at once. Spend all the time you can doodling with stick figures. Stay with them for hours, days, weeks if you feel like it until they become second nature, until you can create virtually any pose you can think of. So mm -hmm. we're going to do a little bit. Uh, I'll be sketching some stick figures uh, while you chit-chat. Well, we'll chit-chat together, obviously, about, uh, about uh, I mean, there's a lot more to this book, actually, but uh, I'll be doing that. Um, I, I actually enjoy this. I I've been looked through this book. And I... uh, let's see. Uh, interesting about because uh, we were talking earlier. I don't remember if we talked on the stream when we were going about uh, the bibliography for this book. We we're talking about different other books. Mm -hmm. uh, the bibliography for this book reference, references Bern Hogarth, which I have two of his books. Uh, I actually have the one Dynamic Anatomy that's here. Yeah. And I have one uh, drawing dynamic hands, which isn't yep, here. That's, that's a really good book. Yeah, so I have the I have I own those two books. Uh, there's <laughs> also another one on animal drawing, which is uh, it's by Jack Ham, mm -hmm. and I actually have another book by him called uh, Cartooning the Head and Figure. So that's a and I've been I've been uh, another one uh, Jiminy Cricket who's on. Uh, and you see, you'll see him on some of the chats and live streams, and he has yeah. his own show too. Uh, he recommended this book. I surprised I already had it when he showed me he recommended it, so mm -hmm. I'm really happy with that one. All right, so so yeah, so uh, let's see. I'll start. We're going to talk about some stick figure. Well, well, the the, the, the stick figures are, uh, or you usually start off as a stick figure, and then you build a mannequin off of it, mm -hmm. and then. But the stick figure, the best, I mean, the most useful thing is to get, like, that's how you kind of capture a lot of the uh, the action, the energy within the pose. And uh, that's something that I always focused on to get, like, dynamic poses. And, you know, you don't want to sit there and, like, put all your effort into a pose and not really have any idea where it's going. Mm -hmm. So you just want to throw down quick lines. It's a gesture drawing. That's basically what it yeah. is. And, you know, you draw a, a good way to do it is to use your shoulder when you're drawing it and mm -hmm. you just get you do big swooping motions and you just you just mess with those lines and you keep playing with them. And, you know, the longer you do this stuff, you know, you start building kind of a um, an arsenal of different poses. And after a while, you know, you don't even have to think about it. You're like, you know, you just start throwing these lines out there and, you know, you've got a cool pose before you know it. Yeah. But it takes, I mean, it takes a long time to really, uh, to really pick up on this stuff. Yeah, well, part of my part of my uh, kind of lessons thing here is that um, I'm writing hours how long I've mm -hmm. been doing it, and it's sort of an it's, overall it's kind of an experiment. So yeah. kind of see well in a year, let's see how I like I did a base drawing. Let's see if I can find it. I did a base drawing, and I said, okay, I'm starting my learning process mm -hmm. here. Where I'm going. Uh, let me see if I can find it. <laughs> I have some of my high school drawings in here. There's another one. Another one. Let's see, here. Let's see if I can find my base drawing. 
can you lift the your book up a little bit? It's a little out yeah. of frame. I was just looking for the page. Here we go. Oh, okay. This is what All I right. did based on not doing any real lessons. Yeah. Just kind of a basic idea of what I think I know. And this will this is like my all right. Uh now in a year or however many months, if I think I've improved, I'll redraw the same picture. Yeah. More or less. And just Oh, you, you will know. you will improve. If you yeah. put if you put you just a little bit of time into it, you will improve. It, yeah. So, it, so it the point happen. is to now, then I'll I'll be I'll do a stream where I'll be like, all right, so I'm gonna go and do uh, you know, I'll show the picture, I'll redo it, and then I'll compare the two and say, Oh look, this is where I still need to work on, but here's where I've improved, that kind of yeah. stuff. So, oh. the, so I write down like this. I did two hours, and yeah. I did it on a stream. So it was it wasn't like concentrating, it was talking to mm -hmm. other people and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then I did. Let's see. I did one show where I all I did was eyes. We uh -huh. drew my my daughter's manga book. Yeah. And then I did. Uh, then I did the Hogarth book, and I just did kind of the head study mm -hmm. a little bit. And you can see my <laughs> you can see my figure drawing on the head. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah, sweet, man. Did, yeah, and then you know I did the that one right there uh -huh. afterwards. So that was you know I wrote five and a half hours. That's yeah. how much total I've been doing, and it's all mm -hmm. you know not steady, but I tried to draw a little bit of uh, uh when they did one the one punch, punch man, yeah one punch man on the, on the uh, drawn and quartered. I was mm -hmm. like, let's see if I could draw along with it, and so I did. I was going to have him Chuck Norris versus one, <laughs> and I was like, who would win? Hmm, who would win? Yeah, <laughs> I, I would put my money on Chuck Norris. <laughs> I, I I actually did a post on Twitter when they were doing it, and I was like, I tried to draw One Punch Man versus Chuck Norris, and all that kept coming out was this, and it was a gift <laughs> of a nuclear explosion. <laughs> right, so, That's hilarious. Yeah. So today, we'll just do some basic stick figures, and you tell me a little bit about swings and how swings is going. I'm going to go ahead and. Unshare there. Well, un there we go. Okay. So, uh, can I pick, pull up a. Um, you do whatever you need to do. How do I do the screen share? Well, if you look in the corner, you'll see a little green box with the uh, arrow. That's your screen share. Oh, there we go. Okay. Let me pull up. Let me get off. Let me get all my tranny porn off my computer real quick. <laughs> I don't want to pull a Alex Jones here. <laughs> All right, one second. And... All right. Uh, the metal has said, uh, stick figures always mess me up personally. Bubble people help me visualize the pose in space better. He says, but that's just me. Everybody thinks a little differently. So everybody comes to different conclusions from different paths. So, I mean, so even when I'm doing stuff, if it's not working, I might try something else just to see because maybe – like I might instead of stick figures or instead of like this kind of rounded chest thing, I might just mm -hmm. kind of do a this and then this and then that and then a circle there and then you know and then I might be a triangle guy as opposed be a triangle to, guy. Oh, I could be. I'm not saying I am, but <laughs> I mean, as an idea, I might be. Yeah. Everybody looks like a triangle. Mm -hmm. You know. No, but I really drawing while you're a little older, and I mean, you call me old. You say, no, I, <laughs> we're probably close to the same age. I'm <laughs> I'm 35, so I got ten exactly. years on you. <laughs> uh, but uh, I mean, I started drawing. You know, I was really young. Like I don't even remember when I started drawing, and um, you know, years. In years, I drew just it was just stupid, like you know, you don't you weren't trained or anything. And I would literally like start out a hand and I'd like draw a hand, and like you know, there's no erasing or anything like that. If I messed up, I kind of like crumbled it up and threw it away, like it was like horrible OCD stuff, but uh, yeah, and I drew like that for years, and I, I went to uh. I went to some drawing classes when I was a little older and then I was like, oh, wow, like I was going about this the wrong way for my whole life. <laughs> so then I had to like unlearn all these bad habits and I went to college and then I had to learn or unlearn even more bad habits. 
and then pick up some bad habits. <laughs> and uh, no, so when you're you're a little older and stuff, like you know, you're doing it the right way. You're just learning the basics, and you know, you can save yourself a lot of time. And well, I was talking to somebody. Here. I was talking to somebody about because you know we're talking about the difference between. Oh, they said they they draw with a with a certain pen. I was like, I can't draw with a pen. How are you supposed to erase that? And he was like, yeah. Well, there's two there's two theories on that. You can draw with a pen, which kind of forces you to learn better because you yeah. can't erase it. And then there's the theory, well, I can always just fix it later. And uh -huh. that's just two different ways of thinking about you know doing the same thing. Yeah. No, and I mean nowadays, I I mean I'll do some you know some sketching and stuff and and pen every once in a while. But, you know, I usually start with pencil and, you know, build my way up and you know, do it. Yeah, I treat every drawing like it could potentially become something. But now it's like I, I do, you know, 99% of my drawing on an iPad just because it's, I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense because it captures, it takes a video of all of my work. So mm -hmm. then I can always upload those up, which I need to do. I need to upload a lot onto um, my YouTube. I haven't done it in months, but um, it captures all of that. And you can, I mean, it just makes things so much easier and streamlined, you know, especially when you're taking on a giant project, like doing an entire comic on your own. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. So having something digital like that, where you can always go back is it's huge. It's yeah. just. I think once I've got some basics down, and we'll see how I'm doing with it before I mm -hmm. start spending the money on doing it. Because I'm yeah. actually, if I if I'm going to enjoy it, I'm actually getting decent at it. Like yeah. I think, like I did some stuff in high school, and it was all you know, it's trash high school drawing, without any training. But I mm -hmm. think I look at it now, and I'm like, well, it's kind of trashy, but I can see where I kind of might have had a little bit here, a little bit there. Yeah. If I had had formal training. And I had kept with it. Probably right yeah. now, you're a pretty decent artist. Uh huh. Especially yeah. after you know, thirty years or whatever. No, you. In I'm like I'm, I'm only a few months. I'm only a few months younger than Ethan. Yeah. So I mean, I think we we graduated maybe a year apart in high school. Yeah. So, I mean, if I had had the same, you know, at least focus that uh -huh. he had, I, I'd be. I I feel like I'd be, you know, a much better artist. Yeah. And you know, like. Was it us that we're talking about uh, talent and like perseverance and how talent only takes you so far? Yeah, you can be yeah. talented. And to me, and this is my theory on talent, uh, there are some people that pick up on it easier than uh -huh. others. And it's a matter of your brain is just kind of wired to yeah. your hand differently. You know what I mean? It's it's just the just the right neurons are just in the right spot and make just the right connections during whatever. Yeah. And you you kind of have a natural, but you still have to work at it. But then there are oh, other yeah. people that work hard at it. And to me, you're training. You can retrain all those neurons. Yeah. To 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 flow the way you know you need to, and that's just that's basically what muscle memory is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, would you? If it sounds it sounds kind of funny, but. Uh, if you talk to, you know, a lot of professional artists and you just tell them like, oh, you're so talented and stuff like that, it's, I mean, most people would take it as a compliment, whatever, but you can understand where some kind of take it as a, you know, a smack to the face because it's always, a lot of people don't equate talent, they don't equate talent to like all the hard work. And if you're if you're a top artist out there, you're putting a, a ridiculous amount of hours and effort into everything you do. And, you know, unless they're not honest and they're just a completely jerk, a complete jerk, like, you know, they'll tell you that. Like, yeah, you know, it's no one sits there and just sits down every day. And I mean, there's there's days where I'll sit down and do what I would consider an easy drawing and it's like all of a sudden four hours go by and I like nothing is hitting I have, nothing is hitting and you're just like you know, what the heck and every artist will tell you the same like it happens to everyone like 
some days you're on and some days you just completely aren't <laughs> it's it could be it can be pretty weird but um yeah anyways i got i got my screen I, you can see my screen okay right i can okay cool yeah um i'm not like super conceited and just have like my art up as my screensaver all the time but doing this really helps with motivating like mm -hmm. especially with a long project like this where you know if i sit down at my computer and i see this in the background i'm like okay i need to get to work and it just keeps me motivated you know to uh to do that instead of watching you know tv or playing video games or uh, anything mm -hmm. like that so what's that youtube yes YouTube. <laughs> yeah youtube's really bad because you know you just go down the rabbit hole and before you know it four hours goes by and you're like i've accomplished nothing except uh listen to a bunch of idiots complain about you know unimportant things or every once in a while i'll go down like a conspiracy theory rabbit hole and at the end i'm just like I just wasted so much time on my life. Okay. Well, um, lately I had a bit of a setback with working in uh, March. It really sucked. Uh, my mom passed. So oh. like, yeah, it, it really sucked. But um, yeah, she was uh, battling cancer for a while. And so, um, you know, I had, for like a week i had like zero motivation to do anything i just went back with my family and hung out there and you know just dealt with stuff and then every time i'd sit down and try to start working again it was just like you know no motivation or anything and, uh within the last probably three weeks i really picked it up again and you know got back to work on things and yeah so a little bit of a bummer right there the metal uh, says, the metal says on the other hand i'm really conceited and have my art as my wallpaper <laughs> all the time <laughs> that's fine i mean no, <laughs> you, do, you do your thing dude like <laughs> that's hilarious though but uh yeah here's um here's one of my uh more uh difficult um pages that i had to that i drew out and uh th this is a scene with some local yahoos um some swamp yahoos and uh they were just like tying one on the night before they're all screwed up and stuff the one dude's he puked all over himself over here and you know they're still up all day drinking and smoking and all this stuff. And uh, I'm not going to give away too much of the story, but these guys, you know, it gets weird with them. But uh, as you can, in this top panel, you can see, you know, some uh, some two point perspective going on um, with the truck, you know, the house, their shitty little shanty, whatever. And um, but like I never, I never really drew cars or anything too much until I was probably in college. And to this day, drawing ellipses, like on tires and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It, it, I mean, human body's hard to draw, but ellipses, dude, those things, they drive me nuts. It, it doesn't matter, like, you know how perfect i lay it out structurally it's always a pain to you know to nail them just right and uh i was doing that recently with with a piece i was working on where it's their truck like flying through the swamp whatever to get the wheels right and all that it was just a it was a pain do you do, do you uh, freehand all the ellipses or do you have like a little tool um well what i do is i uh since i do it on my my ipad they mm -hmm. actually just um installed a tool recently where you basically can draw 
like freehand a circle and it can be super crummy mm -hmm. and then um it'll edit it to be a circle and then you can edit that circle into you know whatever angle or shape you want and it's it's a lifesaver like it makes things so much easier and uh so that's what that's what i've been using for a lot of the ellipses that i've uh come into throughout the book so far and uh yeah it just you know if you do it by hand you can get like you know different um stencils or ellipses or uh, ellipse stencils and french curves and stuff like that i mean that's what you know when you see ethan drawing and stuff and he's nailing you know these long curves and stuff like that i'm pretty sure he uses a french curve and i think I've and seen that's the way you do it yeah i think i've seen him draw streams pull them out and yeah and uh no nah, and the thing is it's you should be smart with your time because time is money here and uh you know you can spend all day trying to draw it freehand or you can use the tool and nail it the first time and go on with life and yeah that's how i look at digital things as well it's just another tool i mean with digital if you don't have traditional drawing skills like it the computer's not going to make you a better drawer like it just mm -hmm. isn't going to do that so that's why it is important to start off traditionally working in pencil and you know doing what you're doing learning um the basics and anatomy and all that so you know it's uh definitely important to do that but uh yeah and then like in the the second panel on this page uh it's got like a a bit of a downward camera angle and um you know while drawing something like this you know i it's all structurally drawn like it was all drawn out you know with my vanishing points and everything there is no eyeballing anything like everything on the table was uh planned out with vanishing points and everything and it, it takes forever <laughs> like it doesn't you, it's not like you could just sit down and you know like that that one artist what the heck's his name um Tim, uh, geez, Lim? Lim? Uh, no, Ooh. oh my God, his name completely slips my, he's the one that does all the freestyle drawing and, uh, oh God, I can't even think of his name. This is really getting me mad, but, um, you know, he'll do perspective drawing freehand oh. and nail it. It's amazing. Like, I don't know how that guy's brain's wired, but you know he's he's amazing when it comes to perspective and drawing freehand he'll draw on like fish eye lens and all this stuff it's all free it's just uh what's that all free i can't like fish yeah I can't. He, it, it's freehand it's uh it's pretty insane um what he does but um yeah i'm not like i can't do that stuff so everything i do is structurally drawn out and you know and it just it takes forever mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's why it, it gets me mad when i see stuff in you know comics where the artist just didn't take they didn't care like they didn't take their time and they mm -hmm. just throw out you know random lines and it's like oh you know here's a building and it you know it just looks like a a box you know they didn't yeah really put it thought or time into it or anything and you know it's a bummer to see see someone do that stuff and they make money i mean i'll be not very much but you know they get paid to do this i can then, I, I, I can see it in some certain styles if like, yeah because uh, because like uh things like uh hellboy um mm -hmm. it's so stylized like obviously you know, proportions are, are a lot different. It's a very different style. Mm -hmm. And maybe at some point, some stuff has to is more simplified and other stuff is more complicated. But again, yeah. if you're, if, if, if that's, 
if every time somebody looks at your building and it always looks the same, it always looks like a box and there's never any thought into it. Cause sometimes uh -huh. it's about stressing the important part of the, of the, the frame mm -hmm. and you kind of, you in the background a little bit, like I said, it depends on the situation and style. And it's all nuanced. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes the background's going to be a little bit simplified. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's fine. I mean, when you, when it fits your style and stuff and, uh, you know, if it looks good, it looks good, but you do see some things where it's just like, yeah. what in the world are, you know, and are they other trying to pull just lazy. <laughs> What's that? Other times it's just lazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a, there's a yeah, lot. I mean, there's a difference between stylized and lazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Uh, and, I, uh, you know, there's, there's even, you know, some books I've seen recently where hands were drawn and there was no effort put into drawing the hand at all. Like it, it was so clear that they just threw it down there, like yeah, whatever. It, and it, you know, here's, your so, sausage, here's your sausage flour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it just, that stuff really aggravates me because, you know, I put a ton of time and, um, you know, care into everything I draw, and then, you know. Uh, the metal says, uh, can't let these newfangled devices be a crutch. We need to start traditionally with paints made of flowers, berries, and drawing <laughs> big walls. Oh, yeah, and it, it, yeah, exactly. Like, um, that's, that's so funny, though. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got, I got a minor uh, kids crisis. <laughs> oh, it, dude, I, I completely they were, understand. They were just running around yelling downstairs. I deal with, uh, you know, children crises going on all the time, especially with my son. The kid's a savage. <laughs> <laughs> he, like our six-year-old. Yeah, that's like our six-year-old. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. Everyone I talk to who has sons. Like our daughter, she was like this perfect little kid. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not our daughter. Not our daughter. <laughs> uh, our daughter. God. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> no, I. Everybody's I, I, always I, like, "Oh, our daughters are perfect." I'm like, "Where the hell did you go right?" <laughs> <laughs> oh no, my like seriously, our daughter was so great. We're like. Man, we must be really good parents. Like, <laughs> it was just this bad trick played on us. Like, we we're like, oh god, we must be really good parents. Let's go for number two. And then all of a sudden, our son comes out, bright red hair, looks like a little drunken Irish man. The second he comes out, and he acted like one too. Like he's <laughs> he's he's out of control, man. And it, it, there's no stop to it. It's just you know. Uh, I don't know, but uh, anyways, back um, back to some of these pages I've been working on. Um, this um, the first page that you saw there. The the uh, Yahoos are sitting there watching TV. And this scene shows what they're watching, and it's like you know one of these paranormal shows on TV, which you know they're like a an hour of. Um, nothing like literally nothing ever happens <laughs> it all but uh there's there's this one character um or a host that i always see and my my brother always makes fun of him and uh jet was it zach baggins i think he does like some ghost hunter show whatever and the dude's just like the biggest douchebag ever <laughs> Like it's 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 painful. Is he the guy who wears like the, the, the black t shirt too tight? Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, got, he's got like the like the military haircut kind of or yeah. whatever. He's got he's yeah. got the douchebag haircut. Yes, he's a he's a giant dude. But <laughs> my my brother's like, you gotta you gotta make the paranormal dude the host Jack Faggins. So I was like, okay, whatever, we'll do that. So that's that's what we went with. <laughs> For the dude's name. Now, were you, you're yeah. telling me, uh, I can't remember if it was you, 
Were you saying you, you and your brother are both working on books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was actually <laughs> trying to get my brother to come on tonight because he's a character. Like, he won't even have to talk about the book to keep people entertained. He's just he's just an interesting. Wait, will you not come on? I'll send him an invite. Um, I will. He's down in Cincinnati. I don't know what he's doing. I uh, I was talking to him earlier, and he said he might have to work late. But um, then I haven't heard back from him. But yeah, he's he's writing the stuff and um, the stuff, the book, and uh, yeah, it's it's funny because we both can't come to like we both have the same type of you know sense of humor and everything, and you know there will be some some humor in the book and stuff and we just come to these conclusions together and right that's what we're going to go with like <laughs> screw it whatever so yeah but this is like the introduction to this character and uh this character is he's a douchebag like you know he's i don't know if you know who art bell is or anything no, like oh, yeah, that, I know art bell is. yeah well this is like this is basically like art bell's signature pose where mm -hmm. he's like smoking a cigarette and all that like i took that pose not that i think art bell was a douchebag or anything but you know he is this kind of like quintessential you know paranormal radio host that that, that guy was awesome he would have almost anybody on his show <laughs> yeah and he would, and he, would totally, and he he would totally he would listen to them and they would say the most ridiculous things yeah and it was like, oh, as far yeah. as he was concerned, it was his job to believe them, whether he exactly. actually believed them or not. Exactly. He would egg them on. He would he would egg the crazy to come on. And not like yeah. in a condescending way or anything like that. Like, he just... He knew what made a good show. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, I, I got into listening to him when, I don't know, probably late 90s or something. Yeah, and I, I've almost always worked late, worked overnights. Almost every uh -huh. time I've had. So I, at some point, I know I used to listen to Coast to Coast all the time. Arco. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I'll still listen to it just because I, mm. I love listening to mentally ill people talk about <laughs> <laughs> talk about their experiences. Don't go looking uh, on YouTube for his stuff because then you'll never come back. I oh, no. I, 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 I do. I li stuff on Mel's Hole. That was a big <laughs> one. Did you ever hear that one? Mel's hole. Mel, Mel's hole. And it's called Mel's hole, and it oh. is supposedly this like big hole in the ground somewhere in Washington. He said it, the guy claimed his guy said his name was Mel. He claimed it was on his property, and they set up this big like pulley system, and they would like dip stuff down. And supposedly their little rope thing or whatever, they got it down to a mile down into this hole and all kinds of crazy stuff happened around the hole. Like a dog fell into it and then they saw it like years later and like all, just all this weird stuff. Like they, they saw like, like water would shoot out of it. Darkness would shoot out of it into the, into the sky and you could see the darkness coming out of the hole, not a cloud, but darkness <laughs> came out of the hole. And there was and the same guy a few years later found another hole like in New Mexico and it was another like all kinds of stupid weirdness happened. Weird animals oh, jump man. out, and it was crazy. Yeah, but those sure stories I always found. I, I always found it was it was fun to listen to. Oh yeah, it's it's complete entertainment. I I absolutely love it. I mean, I still listen to this stuff all the time. It's not as great without Art Bell, but uh, it's, George it's still I don't fun. like the new guy. George Norrie, like everything is crystal. Yeah, I, exactly. <laughs> Everything's George Story. Yeah, oh, that, story. yeah. Everything's about crystals and and the new agey stuff, and it, there's not uh -huh. enough about aliens and just general. Exactly. Crystals. Yeah, like I want to hear about some hillbilly like getting taken by aliens and having weird butt stuff done to him. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's that's what I want to hear about. Like on that care. note. On that note, I want all my listeners to go to Indiegogo and back the abductables. <laughs> the abductables. Oh man, is that is I I haven't heard about the abductables. Oh, you haven't heard that one? Oh my god! Uh -huh. You know who Canalis is? eBay Canalis. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. He uh, yeah. him and another guy. They did a book. <laughs> I, I can't remember. I posted all the time. I think they 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 did a book where 
basically <laughs> the alien it was the basic alien abduction story they come yeah. down and they kidnap a guy and they put him on the table and they're ready to do the, their thing right <laughs> and it turns out like the guy they kidnap is the ultimate like arnold schwarzenegger action hero <laughs> And it becomes like a reverse alien on the movie where the human is the alien wiping out all the aliens. <laughs> and he's just like total and they made it total like he's total cheesy 80s action hero. That's, they, dude, that's and, awesome. It sound I'm like it sounded it sound I, I ordered it. I actually got that one. And it sounds freaking I'm, hilarious. I can't wait to get yeah, it. I'm, I'm gonna have to back that dude. That is hilarious. Yeah, it's oh, got the and he's got all, like, throw in all the cheesy one-liners, the whole the whole deal. That's awesome. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I went on a uh, Arnold kick not too long ago, and was showing my son all these these movies, and my wife's just like, like she didn't watch this stuff growing up. She's like, why would I, you know, why would I ever watch this stuff? She's like, he's the worst actor ever. I'm like, yeah, I know. That's the charm of it. <laughs> like, it's all so awful. Yeah, I, sh I showed my son, my oldest. Uh, we saw Predator. Well, he's 14. Oh, yeah. He's 14 now. We saw Predator, and he really liked Aliens, the, the second mm -hmm. one. I, show I showed him that one first. I was like, you got to see this one. This is a classic. I, ha I haven't shown him all the die. Excuse me. I haven't shown him any of the diehards yet. <laughs> and uh, we've got all the Mission Impossibles, all of those. Those are pretty good too. Yeah. At some point, we're gonna watch all of those ones. <laughs> but I want to introduce them to, to to the real the movies. When I, I mean, I didn't see any of these until you know, because my dad never let me see any of his rated R movies. But as soon yeah. as I could, I you know, all of them. Terminator. I mean, I think I snuck a few, mm -hmm. not a lot, but I think I snuck Terminator early. But all oh, of them, no. I made sure that I you know I, I saw as many of those as I could as soon as I could. Yeah, no, I I'm the absolute opposite with my my son's four, mm -hmm. and he's seen um, almost all the Predator movies. See, I can't do that because my six year old will then jump into my bed at night. Yeah, he, he's not the one that'll stay in his bed. So I yeah would like to show him those movies, but I know that he's just gonna jump into my bed at night and then you know. No yeah, sleeping. no one's sleeping. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, I, I get that, and it's you know pretty irresponsible on my behalf. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun. Like I can only watch the Lego Movie, you know, so many times, but be before I just want to, you know, hit something. And, yeah, uh, I, I, yeah can't so. do that. I can't do that many kids' movies. Not. I mean, I can do the kind of on the on the cusp, you know, kind of teeny movies. I can I can handle yeah. them depending depending on what they are, but uh, yeah, I can the, the kids movies. I can only I I get it because I have kids, so I'm you know for the most part I'm okay with it. But like my son, my oldest, when he was a kid, Star Wars. Mm -hmm. No, uh, Finding Nemo. Oh well, oh he my was God. two when he was like two. Finding Nemo all <laughs> yeah. the time, like five times. <laughs> Not stop. Yeah, yeah. The uh, my my son doesn't stop with Jurassic Park. All oh, of them. Like Jurassic he, Park. He, <laughs> yeah, he loves all the Jurassic Parks. But yeah, one one night though, there's this this really messed up movie that was on Netflix, and you know it was a late night, whatever. And my son's sleeping like with me on the couch, and he's sound asleep. I'm like. I'm gonna put on this messed up clown movie just because my my Where, one friend is telling. Uh, no, Aww. it's called Terrifier. I think that's what it was called, Terrifier, and it's it's like pretty messed up, dude. There's there's some very harsh scenes in it, and uh, I'm watching it, and there is this awful scene, like with a i think it was a chainsaw or something but it's bad like mm -hmm. it was enough for me to be like i don't even know if i want to watch finish watching this and all of a sudden my son turns around and he's wide awake and he is he was watching it <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> this is awful and now he always asked to watch terrifier and I'm like, no, <laughs> we can't watch this, man. Like, this is inappropriate stuff. Like, 
you know, he saw a naked woman get sawed in half from crotch <laughs> to head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. And the thing is, he was he was dead quiet. Like he wasn't making any noise. I thought he was still sleeping. And now nah, he's he saw the whole thing. And, oh my and god. He, he's all about terrifier now. And I'm like, this is like, he's, he's, gonna, he's gonna be, yeah, be, he's gonna be right your fault. He's gonna be he's gonna be talking to a therapist <laughs> you know, in 20 years. He's gonna tell him about his irresponsible father. Watching snuff films in front of them. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so screwed up. But yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, that's that's the stuff that's going on when I'm not working all day or drawing comic books. <laughs> Is I'm ruining my my child's psyche. So. <laughs> Destroying your children psychologically. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But no, you got uh, you got a cool little sketch going on down here. To uh, looks like he's skydiving or something. Yeah, that's my. Free, yeah, you got that free one. fall. I did the free fall. I actually, mm -hmm. uh, we're doing a comic. I'm doing a comic with an artist. Uh, I know Paul Dozier. Yeah, and I came up with this character together. And there's one scene at the very beginning of the of the uh, of the comic where she she jumps out of a plane. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing this one, the classic, he's, you know, superhero landing kind of thing. Yep. Me holding the sword here. Mm hmm No, yeah. Yeah, dude. Doing these poses and stuff, it, like, when I grew up drawing, all I did was draw, like, you know, action poses, heroes, kind of like pin-up work. Yeah. And, I mean, that's all I drew for forever. And uh, I was a huge Max fan. The Max. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can see this is these are some of the pictures. This sketchbook I've had since high school, maybe college. Mm -hmm. And you can see all you can see. There's a whole section. There's a whole section where all I did was draw different versions of the. Max. This is my Max Batman combination. And I drew like three of them. Yeah. And uh, I had I had one character. It's not in here. And like I said, I, I used to, it was my favorite comic at the time. I used to love the style and I like the story and stuff. And I did one with the, the original, not, I mean, it was in the pose of the original cover, which is essentially what this is. It was mm -hmm. the legs were up and the arms were down. And I cut, I took the character and it was like a parody. And all I did was I gave him two teeth and I called <laughs> him the woodchuck. You called him woodchuck? I called him the woodchuck because instead of all the teeth, it was just two, like, two teeth. He could have been the squirrel or anything. I don't even call him the woodchuck. <laughs> that's cool, though. I haven't heard of a woodchuck uh, hero yet. I mean, that's that, quite a bit yeah, I guess, uh, well, well, I guess what the, he would be a groundhog, so maybe he would uh, stop time for a day. <laughs> that would be his power. His power would be he lives the same day every day. So he would <laughs> That's what he would do. He would travel the world. It would be the same day every day, and he would try to stop. Uh, he would try to stop uh, whatever bad thing was happening that day. He would read a newspaper, and it would always be the same day. All right, I know where all the crimes in the world are happening. Now I have to figure out a way to get there. <laughs> uh, it's pretty funny, though. Yeah, the the Max. That's that's one book where you're probably not going to learn too much with uh perspective <laughs> it was like a, you have to do your groundwork first and then you can yeah. move on to the head <laughs> like a, a side scroller or something yeah <laughs> yeah speak of the devil i got i got that little monster walking in here now <laughs> Try okay we're trying to keep ours contained to the room but it's not, <laughs> not as successful working. as we'd like Okay, I'll go. I'm gonna kick this little monster out real quick. All right. One sec. Go put a movie on for him. <laughs> right. All right. So let's see. What other kind of poses can I do? Let's see. I have to keep refreshing on my phone. Nothing new. Because nothing new. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Hey, the metal. Did you want to come on? 
You seem to be into artsy type stuff. I just have to send you an email. Uh, Mike Murphy might show up. Uh, he's out with his wife. They're taking time away from the baby, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fuss if he can't make it. <laughs> I had because uh, I have three kids, so I know what it's like to get uh, a little time away, especially when they're that young. It's hard to find a sitter, so uh, we will definitely have Mike Murphy on again at a different time. But since let's see, let's do a screen share. Uh, go ahead and share the screen. All right, I'm back, kind of. All right, we're just. Uh, well, I'll go ahead. I'm, I'm just screen sharing what I got here. Uh, oh, okay. gonna, I was like, yeah, no, that's right. Uh, we're going to be, uh, Mike Murphy might come on a little bit later. I was okay. just saying, he's, he's got time away from his kid. So, uh, yeah. he went to see Endgame and stuff. <laughs> God. Sorry. This <laughs> oh, no, no. That's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Samurai and Dinosaurs is Mike Murphy's book. And, yeah, uh, that's, that's really fun. Yeah, I backed this one, and there he's an eight eight thousand. Oh, he so he's that's funded. awesome. Yeah, so he's funded, and uh, if you haven't checked this book out for anybody listening, uh, give it a shot. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. It's in a uh, more cartoony style. Yeah, but the story is really neat. Uh, I guess a, a meteor hits in Japan, and it causes mm -hmm. some kind of time rifts. And these dinosaurs that start appearing in Japan, and these samurai are sent to go investigate the the monsters that are suddenly appearing. So yeah, so, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Though. Yeah, so this is this is a good one. This is another one I backed. Again, I uh, hope Mike might be able to show up. Uh, I think at this point he's probably going to be kind of tired coming back. Yeah. Yeah, he said he was going to see uh, Endgame, right? Was that mm -hmm. his thing? Yeah, I. You know, everyone at my work was making a big deal about it. I mean, I, I work at, you know, a place we're all nerds there. Mm -hmm. and everyone's super excited about the movie. I, uh, I never got into comic book movies. Like, I just know it, you know, it never did anything for me. Like, I love comics and mm -hmm. I love them as comics. And, but as movies, it just doesn't. I don't know. It just never made a connection for me, or I never had a connection to it. And uh, all these people at work just going on and on, and you know, where everyone was staying off line and stuff because they didn't want to hear about any of the spoilers and stuff. So I just kept making stuff up, <laughs> and, like <laughs> just trying to ruin everyone's day. I did that the other yeah. day. Somebody some I, I post I just posted just saw I was like just saw uh, Endgame. Uh, ask me anything, and they, <laughs> they asked me like just, that. they asked me a series of questions, and I was like somebody asked me uh well does she does she, Brie Larson ruin the movie or is, is she as bad? And I'm like oh it's worse. <clears throat> and somebody somebody asked, they asked me something else, and I was like oh well uh, her and, and Captain America they have sex in the middle of the movie, and then they switch titles. <laughs> They ask who died. I didn't even see. I didn't even see Captain Marvel. I was just the, the name of that was Goose. So I'm like, that's who dies. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I, I like everywhere around here. Tickets are sold out for pretty much the whole weekend. I mean, up here in Columbus, Ohio. We're trying, yeah, what we're trying to do is uh, we might depending on the weather. If it hold, if the weather's okay. We might go to the drive-in tomorrow to see it. Yeah. Uh, but cool. if not, if not, all the other theaters are sold out except for front row seats. So I don't want. I'm not even gonna go. Yeah, I went. You know, want to sit ten feet away from a screen and look straight up. I mean, maybe we'll look at a Sunday matinee. We'll see if now they're yeah. all sold out. Yeah, my wife's nodding. And they're all sold out too. <laughs> yeah. I I just. You know, I don't I don't have any family around up here or anything, so like I can't just like throw my kids off on grandparents and stuff. It like when my wife and I try to get out of the house, it's like a whole like operation. It's you need to have it sucks. Like, yeah, I know. Eventually, eventually, 
they she my daughter will be a teenager so i don't know if my son will make it that long yeah well we, we have, have uh, those tests too yeah we have like <laughs> our two oldest are a year and a half apart 18 months apart yeah yeah and, and then my youngest uh is six right now so my oldest is 14 and my youngest is six yeah so yeah. I mean, for us it, it just for basic baby i mean I don't know if I'd try yeah. for a weekend, but you know, if we just yeah. go somewhere, then it's okay. We usually go after bedtime. We're just too. like, yeah, yeah, and usually, that, yeah, that's what we'll do. Like, we'll disappear after bedtime. Go, go. We'll go to like Applebee's and just get like an appetizer or a dessert or something. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, it's sometimes that's just all you want is to like get away from them for like. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, I mean, I love them to death, but yeah, sometimes. Well, we went oh, ten I'm years sure. without sneaking away, so. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious though. Oh man. Yeah, I got I'm trying to find some of my um original um pieces, original pages that I did on Oddity back in like two thousand was it fourteen mm -hmm. or fifteen? And uh I think I think it was fifteen. It was right after my son was born and I based his hair off off him, but the original one that I did was like the first few pages are like really kind of I don't know that like kind of not pervy but definitely like raunchy whatever. Mm -hmm. He's like peeping through windows and stuff. That's that's really weird, but my style has like changed so much. Like this. But I'm trying to find. I've got it on my website, but I can't find it anywhere. Else. Deleted that stuff a while ago. Yeah. Uh, let me try to share this. Okay. Is that going to come up? Is it? Oh, there it is. Yeah. So if you could see this, this is what one of the first pages looked like, and uh, uh, it's super goofy. It's a really goofy, uh, really goofy book. But it, uh, I took it in a com like more of a horror direction this time. It's still goofy as hell because that's just the type of person I am. That's what comes through. But. Um, yeah, it's definitely not as silly as this one started off as. Yeah, I started this and then um, I lost my, I got laid off from a design job, which happens all the time when mm -hmm. you're a designer. Like if a company starts going under, the first thing they do is get rid of design <laughs> like yeah idiot yeah and then uh i was home for a few months and i had to start freelancing and i had no time to uh to really do any fun side work so this book kind of went on the back burner and yeah here's some him getting into it with some white trash not funny but um yeah once i you know, found out about all the the indies coming out with Comics Gate and stuff. Um, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. Like, I'm just going to get back to making this book and stuff. And, you know, um, and now it's been almost. Oh shoot! It's going on. I don't know. Probably ten months since I started it, and. You know, drawing it, inking it, and coloring it. I mean, it's it's so much work. But um, and I, you know, before we we're talking about how I wanted to launch it like in the first quarter of this year, and you know, I after thinking about it, I'm like, you know, once the book's done, I'll launch it. In the meantime, I'm just going to keep posting up all of my all the work that I've completed on it you know and uh just all my progress and stuff and you know let people check it out and you know hopefully build 
a bigger audience while working on it. But um, yeah, it just seems like some of these people are like just trying to pump out books, like you know, as fast as possible, or well, not I really put. A lot of people have this idea. I think that like Ethan's eight hundred thousand dollars all goes in his pocket. You know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> so yeah, you you kind of have to because you got to keep your name out there. It's one of those things. Uh -huh. Literally, people. I mean, even Ethan, if he's not pumping out a book. I mean, right now he's been, you know, doing his book like forever. And yeah. Really, just kind of stepped it up because he, I guess, his explanation from what I've been able to gather was he he wasn't sure how long he actually wanted it to be, and he wasn't sure how uh -huh. much it was going to end up in this book, how much he should put in the next book. He just didn't know when to stop drawing. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, yeah. it's one of those things you got to constantly keep your name out there because everybody, exactly. everybody is. What have you done for me lately? I mean, uh -huh. they're going to be that blatant or mean about it, but that's basically what's going on. If you're not yeah. constantly in their attention, then it's because it, it's not like the it's not like they're supported by a big company like Marvel. <coughs> they're basically their own money stream, mm -hmm. and if they're not constantly talking, then then people kind of lose interest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's that's really it. And um, one of the things I did a few months, probably like two months ago. Um, you know, I've got some extras that that need to be murdered in my book, <laughs> and um, I put a tweet out there, and I was just like, "If anyone's interested in being murdered in my book, <laughs> you know, shoot me, shoot me a text, or shoot me a, a message, and um, you know, I'll I'll pick the first three people that respond, and you know, I'll put you in a book. It doesn't cost anything, but you just have to." send me pictures and know that you're going to get murdered so <laughs> and i got a ton of like tons of people came back and um were like really excited about that i'm like i kind of did it like it's a joke like i knew some people would probably dig it but i don't know other people probably think it's weird <laughs> like i wouldn't want my likeness to be murdered in a book but you know some people think that's real cool so i went ahead and you know i got a bunch of people to send me um you know photo reference of them and stuff and you know it, it was just a it was also another way to like get the community involved and stuff like that and, you know i also uh like i'll give away like high-res pdfs of like my covers and stuff like that um just to get people to spread the word and stuff i'll sit there and say you know go out there and retweet it and follow me and you know i'll send you a high-res pdf of the cover you know mm -hmm. or of a pinup or something like that and stuff like that always gets a really good response and Sorry, my son was <laughs> crinkling well, I, up some I can hear the plastic. Bed. Yeah, and he's just looking at me. I guess he's eating chocolate ice cream or something. <laughs> that or it's dried up blood. I can't really tell. But <laughs> beard all over his face. Yeah, whatever. And so, anyways, uh, I try to get you know people in uh, comics gate and in the any comic book community in general. You know to get excited about it and you know and i do i get a lot of a lot of nice uh direct messages and stuff and um people seem to be generally excited about it i do need to promote a lot harder though and really get uh or get your really brother to promote is your brother on twitter uh he's not he's like he's like super like not anti-social <laughs> anti-social media that's how you should put it. like you know he's great you know in person and stuff on twitter i don't know if his i really don't know how his uh sense of humor will really uh come across <laughs> like yeah i have a hard i actually have a hard time with that because uh my sense of humor is kind of i don't gonna say it's all i mean as dad humor kind of but it's yeah. also kind of offbeat a little bit, and it's enough. Where it's hard to tell if I'm just a real idiot 
or <laughs> and, <hold it. laughs> and I try to assure everybody, yes, I'm not a real idiot, but you know, uh, yeah. to me, it's fun. To me, something with something ridiculously stupid is funny. So yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Something that's to me, to me, is obviously stupid, but you can't make that assumption anymore. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I think you're around the right community of people that hopefully some will pick it up. I think they do. I do. I, I always find a lot of your tweets pretty humorous and stuff. And uh, yeah, the only time I'll ever tweet anything that's even semi humorous is if I if I've had a few few drinks of me and then I'll be like, yeah, you know, I'll put it out there. No, I'll well, well, uh, well, go on. Oh, yeah, about tweeting and about whenever almost all the time usually i think i retweet you whenever i see anything that's posted and yeah, i'll do that, that with all my guests or if i just really like your project if mm -hmm. i if you're on my show I'm gonna, and a lot of guys a couple of guys have been on nice guys there's not i mean whatever but they, they don't tweet enough yeah. and it, and it's and it's tough because i mean obviously they have to work on drawing their comic and doing whatever but if you if you don't tweet it out, I'm not always gonna you know come find you to retweet you. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Like, like with Samurai and Dinosaurs, me and Mike Murphy got along real well. So every, mm -hmm. I mean, whenever he tweeted something and he tweeted a lot, I'd retweet it. And yeah. then every once in a while, I'd go to his project and retweet it. So it's yeah. it's one of those things where you, you got to put out stuff. Mm -hmm. You got to no, put you out. Do. You, yeah. and, and you, I mean, you can't show every page, obviously. Yeah, but uh, you, especially right now, you got to make sure you're at least everybody's. Like I saw your oddity picture maybe a week before the first time I talked to you, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Wow, why haven't I seen this before?" I mean, it looked really cool and everything, and I want to make yeah. sure every time I see something that you're working on, that I'm, you know, you can always no, tweet in it or whatever. I'll always retweet it. No, I, I I really appreciate that, and everyone, you know, there's a there's a, a couple guys that always retweet my work and always send you know pretty encouraging things and stuff and um everyone that does that like when it gets time to print and stuff like there will be a credits page and i'm going to you know i'll give everyone props you know give them their uh um any youtube um channels their twitter everything like you know, I'll give back to any people that are, you know, helping me out along the way and stuff. So, um, like, actually, this one, the the cop in my book, who's actually, he's going to be playing a pretty major uh, role. He He's actually a guy that followed me on Instagram for years. Mm -hmm. And, like, uh, he was always, I mean, he always was very supportive and stuff so um i went out and i was like hey man you you want to be in a book and i originally i thought it was just going to be a small role but then the more i started uh you know developing the story and stuff i was like you know what I'll, i think he should be a major role so whether he likes it or not he's going to be starring in a couple of these <laughs> couple of these books and then eventually I'll probably kill him. <laughs> <laughs> now, how big of a story arc do you have for, for the character right now? You have planned out. Um, well, I've got three. What do you want? Well, are you going to, is this first one going to be a big uh, graphic novel or? No, no. The first one I'm doing will be, it'll probably be about 33, 35 pages. And it's just going to be, it would basically be like, the first act in a movie, you mm -hmm. know, like it's just, um, it'll be introducing you to the world. Um, it'll, it'll do some explaining and stuff, but it's going to be mostly, um, eye candy mm -hmm. and getting you, you, you know, you know, sucking you into the story a bit. And then the second book will be more of an origins, you know explaining you know a lot more explaining going on and letting people know how it came to be and stuff like that and then the third book would be to like sum it all up and you know after uh and that's like that's what i've got planned out as now and 
you know, if I drop the first book and, you know, it's not well received or anything like that, then, you know, that's that. Like, I'm not going to sit there, like, you know, beat myself up over it or anything like that. But, um, no, I'm just going to put my best work that I can out there. And um, it seems like people enjoy it. And hopefully, you know, it you picks up and gets on some of these other shows, too. Like, Ethan's completely, I mean, not everybody can do a show every day like Ethan. And yeah. Like, like, but uh, you, getting and doing stuff like uh, even the the drawn and quartered fan edition, and uh -huh. then getting win win one of those, and I don't know how they do it behind the scenes. I kind of suspect that they pick somebody ahead of time that they want to you know help out. Yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm I, this is my theory. I don't know anything for anybody listening. I'm not yeah. trying to cast aspersions. I kind of suspect that they pick somebody that they want to be on the show because one, because whoever wins gets on. So yeah. I, I kind of suspect they're like, Hey, let's help this guy out. We'll pull, help him push his book or whatever. And yeah. get him on, get him on the big, on the big show, which mm -hmm. is perfectly fine. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's not a bad idea at all. Yeah, no, I mean, that, yeah. that's, that's kind of cool really. But yeah. um, now uh, I've got a uh, discord invite from, a couple different creators within the the community and um yeah edwin uh boyette he uh he sent me one the other day and it's like a, it's like the whole comics gate community basically oh, wow is it there and uh do not turn that down i always tell that? people like when uh mike murphy would be on my show when he was really heavy promoting before they're fully funded I'd be like, if you get a call from Ethan and you're on the shelf with me, you dump me and you go on Ethan's show because I'm just going to help you. Oh, we got one guy watching right now. So. Oh, that, like, <laughs> Nothing wrong with the metal. He's a cool guy. But he's only white <laughs> the eyes. No, it's, it's, completely, it's, it's completely cool. Like, you know, I need to, you know, it's, it's fun to just, you know, talk about this stuff but it's also good practice and getting comfortable you know talking about your work and pitching things and stuff and you know i'd keep it real casual you know on a show like this if i was going to if i ever did anything larger like you know i would i'd come super prepared and like you know i don't but then so there's been some people that have gone on Ethan's show and you're just like, like they, they carry them. Like they're just like dead weight. <laughs> like they don't. And he, they don't. he talks about it too. He's like, look, you got to come on my show and you got to talk. Yeah. But there's some, like, uh, I want to say, I think Antonio Bryce, he was a great artist and all that. But I think a lot, a lot of the time, I think it's Antonio Bryce. I could be wrong about that. Cause I know he does speak up, but I know there are some guys on the show that, you know, they have big books and stuff. But they don't they don't really talk all that much yeah and that's yeah. and that's what he's really looking for and he'll keep he'll keep some people on i guess because he's better friends with them than others but yeah like especially if you're a new guy and you're not talking and you're not a big personality yeah and a lot of and some people aren't big personalities that's just the way yeah, that's that's just, the yeah. and you're going to find that a lot with artists yeah. like you know but um, yeah it's tough to be both, I can I imagine. Yeah. But look well, at uh, I, I see uh what's his name on uh Jerkmonger. He does Doug show and then they have the paranormal show. Mm -hmm. And then he does I guess he does sketches sometimes. He does like a drawing stream or whatever. And he, yeah. he puts his name plus he's on drawn and quartered. So he mm -hmm. he's he he's got it pretty balanced, I think. Cause like I said, yeah. Doug show is like an hour long. And then I don't know how long he does his stream. The Paranormals is like an hour long. Yeah. So, so I mean, he manages to to kind of balance that out. And Ethan, he'll get on yeah. his stream for hours and hours and hours. And mm -hmm. yeah, and it, like you know, I stay, I read a lot on on Twitter as much as I can. But I'm not like there's some people that are like always on top of everything going on, mm -hmm. and then like. You know, I'll be off for a couple of days and I'll get back on. And then it's like, there's all these fractions that have broken off and people are fighting and they're like, so-and-so said this or that. And I'm like, what in the world is going like, 
you know, it's a community for comic books. <laughs> like, how, like, the metal, the metal, uh, the metal says, got to develop your radio presence. Yeah. And for, exactly. I, and I've talked about the different, I mean, writers and artists, obviously the art to me, the artists are doing all the heavy lifting and they're working the harder part of the book is getting it drawn. Yeah. So as the, uh, as, as the writer, if I've got a project going and all I'm doing is writing, I mean, for me, it's hobby, it's hard hobby time anyway, because I have a full-time job and, you know, family and all yeah. that. I mean, exactly. I'm, I'm, the, technically I'm the guy that would have the most time to do the promotions. So mm -hmm. I, that's why I got this channel going and I'm hopefully, and every once in a while I'll be on someone else's show and I'm trying to, I'm trying to develop a more comfortable online personality to, uh -huh. So that when it comes time and I got a book ready to drop, I, it's, it's more of a smooth uh, transition. Exactly, and um, you know, I, I I like hearing a lot what Edwin says because he makes a lot of sense, and he's just a level, pretty level-headed guy, and I think he has a lot of good, insightful things to say, and. Uh, you know, he, I mean, I noticed the same thing with people just kind of like rushing books out there. And, you know, if you if you haven't if you're not established like comic book artist or anything like that, I think it's um, a good idea to at least have your book, you know, at least more than halfway finished, like yeah. art and everything before you go to to launch because you know people people aren't going to want to give their money to people who have no you know nothing else out there any previous experience or you know yeah, yeah. and it's it's tough especially like the book i'm one of the books i'm working on now not the the skydiver one the mm -hmm. we're working on another book and it's kind of it's a very niche kind of audience so mm -hmm. it's going to be a tougher sell it's uh, we're doing it's kind of like uh, we're doing a very it's a well we're doing like a Dr. Seuss parody, so I'm writing yeah. it Dr. Seuss verses and he's drawing it in a Dr. Seuss style, and we're mm -hmm. doing basically the the comic skate story, so we're it's gonna it's That's basically, funny. It's gonna, yeah. yeah it's gonna be about Zach and you know Mark Wade that, that whole thing but we're I don't want to be too specific about it yeah because, like, like not you, right you, on the nose but yeah if I and some of the names are obviously close, but I want somebody who had never heard of Comic Skate also to be able to pick it up, and it might it they might say they might it might look like it's for their kids, so they'll yeah. pick it up. And I want a positive message in it, and we want to you know I, because I know kids are going to pick it up, but I don't want them to accidentally pick it up and be like, yeah. oh, what is dirty stuff in it, you know, <laughs> or grown up stuff. stuff that I want to put it in terms that's not dumbed down, but the uh -huh. kids will understand, but won't be preachy. You know what I mean? So it's a yeah. it's a fine line, and hopefully we can pull it off. But yeah. I don't want to do anything until it's at least most of the way finished. Yeah. What's nice is the artist we've been I've been working with the artist for a little over a year on a couple of projects, mm -hmm. and he, he we click really well, and we've it, it's one of those things where neither one of us have ever put out a book before. Yeah. So we're both about okay. We know we're not going to get rich off of this book, so let's concentrate on getting the book made, and then maybe you know, hopefully we'll we'll pull a little bit of a profit, but let's at least get it printed, get it mailed, yeah, and you know, hopefully without a real deadline, you know, I'm not, I can't put any pressure on him to do anything, and yeah. I've been remiss in my writing duties on the book too, so yeah, so I mean, we, we would like to put out the book and. I've got I got a decent I got like twelve hundred followers on Twitter, yeah. But I've only got like 150, 160 people on uh, on uh, on YouTube, and you know right now it's just the metal. The metal is my only guy watching. <laughs> Thank you, metal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and uh, let's see. Like, apparently, I've, I've sent out an invite to him, and apparently we're having issues. So. Uh, Hopefully, hopefully, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, I want to try to to get a big enough presence where it's worth putting out the book 
and I can get yeah. in front of as many eyes as possible. Mm -hmm. So it's also a little bit about developing, you know, relationships with guys like, you know, Edwin. Yeah. And I've talked to the Doug behind the scenes, talked to a uh, tug behind the scenes a couple of times. I've talked to Doug a few times too, Doug Tenaple. Yeah. He's like my kind of long distance mentor that doesn't know it. <laughs> yeah. I like, like I like his I like his personality. I like his ideas. Uh -huh. uh, I've watched a few of his like drawing, or not drawing videos, like uh, story making videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you read, I got the I got the Bigfoot Bill book, and I got the making. Yeah, you did the the um, unwrapping of it, right? <laughs> that I had to take down because my address was on the freaking box. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh oh my happened. god, I was so pissed. I was so pissed. I got uh what's his name? Um uh, Marmaduke. Marmaduke sent me a message like, hey, you might want to blur that out. And I looked at oh. it. I was looking at it on my phone, so I couldn't really see it. And then I blew it up on my computer. I'm like, oh yeah. Uh -huh. And I had to take yeah, that. I tried to just re-edit it, but it moves around too much. So yeah. I was like, all right, so I just took the whole thing down and I'm gonna reshoot the beginning sometime. Probably, yeah. Maybe, if, hopefully, I'll get to it. I want to be able to get to it. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, had lot, I had a lot of fun with it, and it was, you know, it was supposed to be, you know, just a little like, uh, you know, tugging on Doug's leg a little bit. Uh huh. I've, I mean, I've talked to him online. I've talked to, excuse me, I've talked to John Malin a couple of times in DM. Uh, YouTube is just hating on me today because I'm too cool for it. That's why Metal can't get on. <laughs> Is it? I don't know what it's telling you. I had like I used to be able to just DM the address mm -hmm. to get in the to get in the stream, and then yeah. it stopped working. D YouTube made them as some kind of did I don't know what they did. All of a sudden, it stopped working. So now so I have to email the, the 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 thing and an invite, and then it works. But apparently, it's not working for the metal. Huh? Yeah, I don't. I don't know what was. Uh, I are you sure that was on you though earlier with the the speaker and everything? I think it was because we had the same problem. And then as soon as I unplugged my uh, as soon as I unplugged my head my earbuds from my microphone, yeah. I could hear perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. So that was I think I'm pretty sure that was totally on me. Okay, because yeah, earlier uh, like I'll do um, I'll do hangouts like on my my phone with uh family members and stuff and i always use my like my earbuds but they're uh bluetooth and stuff so i wasn't sure if something was going on funky with that but i've been using them this whole time tonight and haven't had too many issues once we got started but yeah i, I like on on my phone i just send the link and then everyone just joins in and then you know, we got like four. You, or five you just send it to DMs, or? Uh, no, no, it's like um, I would do it over like. Oh, you do um, the regular call. Yeah, yeah, call. yeah, like a uh, a text message with the the link in it, and then, you know, people would hit that, and then we all get in and yell at each other and do what <laughs> families do, and then go on <laughs> for the most part, but. Yeah, no, it it was cool though, checking out the the old book though and listening to, uh, Stan's descriptions <laughs> on everything and, you know, and then thinking about like nowadays like that would what you just read would have to send some people in a safe space or something. Oh like. yeah, I know it's, and and again I know as soon as Zach said it I noticed it. It, it popped oh, right into my head. It's one of those things where it's like, what's wrong with this picture? And then when, it's like those magic eye things. I can't see what it is. I know there's something there. And then somebody points it out to you. And then it's like, oh, and then you can't not see it. <laughs> so uh, you look and everybody looks, all the girl, and it, it's only girl bodies. All the girl yeah. bodies look exactly the same. Uh -huh. Some some people aren't more voluptuous than others anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, then they... Uh... They freaking uh, what was it? The uh, um. If they ever do that, if they ever do that to Power Girl, I'm gonna burn down my comic book store. <laughs> they can't. There's no way. Like, there's no oh, way. Right, make it look yeah, I'll, I'll make it the DC offices because I like my com I like my comic book store. 
make her uh, look all homely and oh my god, flat chested. She's not even. Flat. I don't even know what she's in right now. If she's, but if she's she's always the star of the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, but yeah, did uh, Walmart just put out those? Um, what was it? The the DC books, and they they are like heavily edited. They cover the girl asses. Yeah, they put they like they they well. They, my wife's shaking her head. I'll, I'll have to show you the pictures later because it was on Twitter the other day. Like the the outfits used to be, they were like you know like uh, Wonder Woman form fitting, form of a yeah. bottom. Uh -huh. Well, they made them like the they cover more down to the oh, down to the top of the thigh now, and they're flat. Like they got rid of the, like the little ridge that you yeah. know that distinguishes did, the crack. It's like they just I did it, see that. Okay. God. Like I, I don't know. I don't. I I don't know why that was necessary or anything. Like you know when when I was a kid. You know, like in the early '90s and stuff, and we we get all those ridiculous image comics and stuff like that, and you know, it never it never even dawned on me that you know it was weird or anything like that. Every once in a while, my dad would be like, uh, "Well, that's kind of weird that that's in a kid's book, whatever." And I'm, that was about it, but. Okay. No, every, every every time I read a Marvel comic in the '90s, when I was done, I'd go beat my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that's what it would cause you to do. Why do you look like this? <laughs> well, I work retail in a women's <laughs> store, and I see all shapes and sizes, and let me tell you, they all have definition. <laughs> they don't all look the same. No, like, almost, they don't like, all like, have almost like men. Like, None of them. No women are shaped like boards. Like just a plank. They don't, they don't all look like uh, tall ten-year-old boys. No, <laughs> I, none of them look like ten-year-old boys. Yeah, no, nah, that's. I don't know. Things are so crazy. And then uh, I was a a huge fan of like the Mortal Kombat games growing up and stuff. And then I don't know if you were familiar with or heard about this, but. They released a new game. In the new game, they made all the women like they covered them up, like they they used to be like scantily clad. You know, the stuff's hanging out everywhere and jiggling and all My this stuff. Complained about that actually. Who who complained about that? My fourteen year old. He's a he's a, he's a big <laughs> gamer, and he yeah he listens to me a lot talking about SJWs and. He listens to what you know stuff I listen to on YouTube while I'm around. Uh huh. And uh, so he gets he gets that he has that in his head now. But now he sees it everywhere. Uh -huh. and, and he I guess he still has a, or a Twitter account. So like he sees it and he you know he follows certain gamers and stuff and he, and he sees it and it drives him insane now. At least he says it does. That that they took it out or that. Well, that, uh, that, they, that basically they they kind of social justice everything up, uh -huh. and the, the yeah. same game. I mean, I, I he obviously he was too young to play a lot of the Mortal Kombat games when I was a kid. Yeah, but I know he's played them really? since he's gotten older. Yeah, so the older ones he plays them on um, simulators on. Oh, the he's computer. got the emulators on the computer. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I get. I, I never seen him playing the old ones, but yeah, yeah. But they they sat there and. Uh, basically edited everything like i don't care like it doesn't either way it doesn't matter to me but i just think it's funny it's just a sign of the time so you know this it's not really franchise. A thing it's more of a <sighs> kind of yeah thing. exactly well it's just like this this franchise that was built off of you know basically offending everyone with vulgar violence and you know these over sexualized women and stuff like that and now they're like you know they're reeling it back and it's like what like really Wait, at least, at least like back in the day the puritans were consistent about it <laughs> they were consistently like okay ch not child appropriate yeah over sexualized blah 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 uh -huh. nowadays the same people will tell you 
that comic book girl is over sexualized, but that girl on uh, toddlers and tiaras, no, that's the woman. Yeah, exactly. Or where they've got the the little what is it the the tranny kid that goes stripping. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's that's what you call him, right? Or isn't that it? Yeah, tranny I don't know what that is. <laughs> The kid at the uh, drag. That's what it is. Yeah, the drag kid that was at the yeah. bar. Like, I, the fact that they think that's okay. Yeah, I want to vomit when I saw okay. that. Scene. It's, oh. it's it's so disgusting. And then that uh, Charlie Theron, whatever, came out and was like, "Oh my, my kid, my my seven year olds." Uh, I don't know if it was a, a boy or girl. I don't know, but yeah, yeah she's like, yeah, you know. He's always Man. thought he was a girl or something. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you know what's funny is you this the people that tend to have the most trans kids are people who are trans activists. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> it's a coincidence, right? Isn't that funny how that works out? Wow. There, there was hmm. a, there was one lady in England that I just saw recently, and she had like two of her own kids and a foster kid, and all of them were some form of trans. I was like, yeah, that, that's a big coincidence. They're all messed up. Like, that's, yeah. That's, I don't know. I, all I know is that I have, I have a girl and I have a boy. And the boy is on the far end of the spectrum of a boy. Like, <laughs> he is girl. just, he's a savage. <laughs> then we got our daughter and she's just like, this little princess, whatever, <laughs> like she's perfect, and it's so crazy, you know. And I think we raised them exactly the same. It's just lots of problems. Raised them the same. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's insane. Yeah, we had uh, let's see, so yeah. our our thirteen year old, our girl, she's she the middle child. Bro. She's the middle child, so maybe that affects everything. Yeah, but she was oh. she was never a pretty pretty princess. Yeah, to my mom. but that was because she what had happened? you know she had her older brother, who it took her a while to talk to learn to talk. Mm -hmm. or learn to talk. She just didn't talk. She didn't talk because my my son, my son would always tell us what she wanted. <laughs> so, yeah, she didn't need to. She didn't need to. Talk. She didn't need to talk. So it took her forever. We were kind of worried, and now she won't shut up. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, that's that sounds about right. Yeah, and uh, like right now, I'm looking at my son. He's standing on the doorknob of the door in my studio, and he's swinging back and forth on that, the door. That and all he has on are flash underwear. <laughs> and. and and chocolate yeah. all kid, over his face. Our youngest is determined is no pants time. Yeah. He gets home from school and after a little bit, he's like, okay, no pants time. Yeah, no, this kid doesn't, he doesn't wear clothes at all. Like it's, it's, it's awful. Yeah. The people Except come to our, the door. Go on. Cutting out. Oh, we're losing you. Are you, are you losing me? Oh, now we got that. Okay. Yeah, our six-year-old is definitely all boy. There's no doubt that he is a boy into boy things. Mm -hmm. um, now, my daughter kind of straddled the line, so it was, yeah. Yeah. Now, but, and there, I mean, I, I do believe there, there's a spectrum to it, but I don't, I don't buy that, you know, it, a yeah, seven-year-old. A seven-year-old's like, I, you know, I think it's time to you know, do some hormone replacement therapy and it's time for me to become a man. <laughs> I, I just don't, case, I don't buy. There's a case, I don't know where it is. Uh, this mother has decided that her son is trans and she's going to get him the hormone stuff. But when the kid talks to the dad, he's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> He talks to the dad. He's like, "No, I'm a boy. I think I'm a boy. I don't think I'm a girl." His mom dresses him up in dresses and tries to convince him that he's trans. And the father's trying. I, I guess they're separated and divorced. The father's trying to take the son away from the mom before she gets him hormone therapy and surgery and all that before puberty. 
and he's, yeah. he's put, and the courts are like, no, you need to stay away from your son because what you're, oh. you're being a bigot. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! And this is in the United States, and I was like, yeah. if, that were, if that were me, I would straight up kidnap that kid and bring yeah. him to another country until he was eighteen, and then I would uh -huh. come back with him when he's eighteen. I would make arrest me, do what you want. Yeah, I just saved my kid's life. Yeah, it's it's so messed up. Do you uh, do you ever watch uh, Joe Rogan's podcast? Listen to I it. Do or you talking about the Adam Conover thing? Oh my god! Yes, I just watched that the other day. I want I wanted to strangle that guy the whole time. Like, I always want to strangle that guy. He almost yeah. never gets anything right. He's yeah, like, Adam ruins everything, but almost everything is like, wait a minute, no, you didn't well, look at it at angle at all. I think he ruined his career going on there because he looked like a complete jackass. It was great. And, like, you know, yeah. sometimes sometimes Joe will be wishy-washy with people. Like, yeah. someone will come yeah. on and he'll agree with them yeah. and stuff, even though he doesn't. And that's what I was expecting this yeah. this show to be like. And then, and then the, yeah. the sports thing started up, and I was like, oh, yeah. God. But it was it was cool to hear him actually like, you know. Yeah, one guy who, he's willing. I guess he's he's willing to change his mind if he's convinced. If you yeah. convince him, he'll change his mind, and yeah. he keeps an open mind about stuff. And even though know, he he kind of sometimes comes across as that like uh, Chad douche. Yeah. yeah. But he always, he's always like regular guy that's like, all right, I'll hear you out. I want to hear what you have to uh -huh. say. I've never watched. Uh, there's another guy. He's not. He's not like that at all. He's more like you know the, the kind of guys that like uh, the comic skate type guys or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, like it, not like a Tim Pool, but uh, I think I think he said I think his show is Sinatra says. I can't say I have. He does. He he does. He does basic commentary type show where he'll he'll pick, he'll pick whatever the topic of the day is, and he always hit. He always hits on Adam Conover. Always. He'll yeah. do a lot of shows and he'll just completely destroy the show. No, you didn't look at that. Your your example is ridiculous. It's you know you. I couldn't find your source that you listed, or your source or your source is stupid. And he'll, he'll he has a big thing for Adam Conover. Adam Conover. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't. I couldn't stand that guy. Just seeing like short little clips that would be on like Facebook or pop up, you know, on social media here and there. Like I'd see him and I just immediately hate him just i just hate him <laughs> like everything about him but then when he was on rogan i was like you know we'll see maybe it's just a character and stuff like that he and did. it's like not really like that's pretty he's, that's you know well, he's a little yeah, more over the on his on his show if you uh, i guess you've seen his show on his show he's very like upbeat like oh because he's got all the information right in front of him you know because it's all scripted yeah. for him and uh, mm -hmm. once he's off script, you can tell he's like, I'm not really sure about that. I'm not the expert on that. But this is why I get from the whole, well, you know, it's not really, I really don't know. that. I mean, he, he really kind of fumbles over his words a lot more. But he's yeah. got it scripted in front of him, then he's all confident. He did another thing that I, mean, I don't know how long that Rogan show was, but he, they did a, he did a show about the difference between guys who are alpha and beta. Yeah, uh-huh. And, and God. He, he's, he's like, no, that's a total myth. There's no such thing as alpha guys and beta guys. Yeah. And and, and Rogan hit him on that one, too. He's like, are you trying to tell me? Yeah. He, that there aren't guys that are just naturally more confident, and there aren't some guys that are just more shy or whatever. That's basically the difference. Nobody's trying to say, well, well I guess some people say. I mean, I, I'm not an alpha guy. I don't think so. Yeah. I'm probably a more beta guy, but it's but I'm I'm not one of those guys that, tries to puff myself up either there are yeah. some guys who are obviously beta that try to puff themselves up and they can't they can't carry it off and that's mostly what when people when people bring up the idea of beta guys and make that's that's the kind of people that they make fun of yeah but uh he did, he did a whole show on that one and he ripped him apart on that too he's like well <laughs> people are generally more confident than other people yeah like i i don't know that dude he just hates uh, like i i think he just hates himself and and white people like uh like 
I don't know. I, he just came off as like, you know, just so, so progressive. And so, I don't even know if he call. Is that what you call people like that? Is that even progressive? Like, yeah, that's, that's I think that's just, because, you know, he thinks he thinks the little kids should get go through the surgery because that's how they feel right now. So that, that's pretty. I mean, that's that's what they call themselves. But it's yeah. like, what are you oh, yeah, yeah. progressing to? Like, it's like, no, you're you're screwing things up more than anything. Like. The metal says yeah. the whole podcast was so cringy he couldn't stop laughing. Like, <laughs> oh my god, I I really I have a serious dislike for that Conifer guy. Yeah, yep. I think I think most most guys do. Most uh, well, most think, level most level headed people I think do. On non controversial Fine. subjects, I think he's probably got most of his facts straight. But whenever he gets into anything cultural, he obviously uh -huh. has a certain bend to it. Like yeah. he did something on like uh, yeah. the difference with, on like hygiene and stuff like that from like the early, you know, where you know it's the soap industry and all this other stuff. He's not mm -hmm. a big business guy either. The whole an industry is usually evil in his shows too. But yeah. I mean, there's some points where it's like, oh, okay, I can, I can, I can understand that. I can see that. And it's, yeah, it's not really controversial. It's just kind of historical. You can oh you can look back in history and see oh yeah okay that happened then and this happened then. When yeah. it, it tries to get cultural though, that's when he's like he he goes off he, you know he goes off you know off script. Yeah, and I, I remember him doing one on rings and like proposals and marriage. Like, <laughs> yeah. Classic. Okay, I'm I'm gonna have to uh, wrap this one up here. I got. A son that will not settle down right now, and a wife that is looking like she's about to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> That's no problem. You tell her I said good night, and uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, no, I'm I'm down to do another stream anytime, man. Like yeah, uh, no problem. No it's problem. always a good time. And, it will get you on as a regular when I start doing drawing more drawing streams. Yeah, whenever, man. Like I I enjoy watching it and you know just talking about. Ballot and yeah, we'll probably get flagged with hate speech or something for this this one, but whatever. It's always, it's always going to devolve into that. So <laughs> yeah, uh, all right, well, man. Uh, anybody well, it, it was good. That is watching this. What's that? I was going to say, anybody that is watching this, make sure uh, I'll put your Twitter in the in the description later. Oh sure, I'll I'll in that. that. Just follow. Was it Sweens07? Yep, Sweens yeah. underscore. Zero seven. Yeah, Green yeah. for zero seven. Check him out and follow him. Oddity's looking really good. It's coming along. Uh, I appreciate it. The project to look up, to look for, and keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll be doing that. We'll, like I said, we'll be tweeting you out every time we see you. All right, man. I appreciate it, guys. All right, you take it easy. All right, you too, man. Yeah. Bye. All right, bye. Bye. All right, and so uh, we'll probably shut down here in a little bit. Uh, how long was this for? How long did this run for? Probably two hours. Yeah, about that. So this ran for a little over two hours. So uh, we're going to put two hours on the clock. Even though I didn't really sketch for two hours, but we got some poses down. And uh, we'll get into some of these more dynamic posings. There's actually, uh, I guess it's not my theory. See, no, look at that. I missed that page. That's a lot of really cool stuff. All right, some posing. There's a thing in here about dynamic posing. Well, on this kind of, uh, let's see, can't see it in the thing. So we'll go over this book just a little bit more. Some fun stuff here. Uh, this is your kind of, your upright run and what you want for more dynamic is obviously a forward moving run. And you can see they did like the little line here. And uh, let's see, there was another thing I wanted to look up, or that I saw here, that I call, the spring. And I'm sure there's another name for it, but whenever I'm looking at a picture and some and there's some action going on, I want to see and they show I mean they show it here. They don't call it, but I call it. But basically you want to see either the spring loaded and ready to go, or you want to see the spring fully sprung. And that's 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 what I call it when I when I see an action pose. I want to see does the spring ready to go or the spring totally sprung. 
the action doesn't look as good when the spring is in the middle and it's in the middle of springing. You want it fully sprung or that's, that's the term I use for it. Uh, there's a lot of actually great stuff in here. About. And what I was talking about before, this book is a lot, when you draw in comics the Marvel way, it's a lot about efficiency because for putting out uh, a book every month. And what they want is you to learn to draw. I mean, obviously this isn't a finished, a finished work, but they want to make sure your sketching is on point. Uh, and there's a, there's a lot. It's not just, you know, look at the pictures, and that's what I get from the pictures. It's a lot about the way uh, Stan Lee, you know, narrates it and talks about, you know, let's see, he says, like, here. Well, we know you're anxious to start drawing a complete figure now, so let's get right to it. John has reduced the process to a matter of five steps. Draw the basic center line to determine your pose and action curve. Right there. Oh, we can't see that. All right. All right. Start fleshing out and sketch, and remember your spheres, cubes, and cylinders. And that's all about making sure you're putting all your stuff on your legs and all that other stuff. Uh, let's see. Begin drawing through, adding the details you're going to need. Remember, keep your pencil strokes loose, light, and graceful. You can see that right here. It starts to fill in a lot more facial details and fingers and that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. Excuse me. Uh, let's see. If if a line isn't right, don't worry about it. Just go over it tightly until it begins to assume the proper form. Steps four and five, as if we have to tell you, are on the next page. That's a, a little kind of uh, it's a it's kind of a um, a uh, Stan Lee ism. That's, and that's one of the fun things about this book is, again, I, I mentioned at the beginning, you can almost hear it in Stan Lee's voice as you're reading all of these. And it makes it, one, it makes it fun to read as you're learning to draw. So, uh, you know, I said this book doesn't, probably you should have your fundamentals down, but I guess if you're just starting, this book covers a lot of the basics. So it might actually, and I'm going to, I'm gonna, you know, admit I'm wrong here. It might actually not be a bad idea to get some basics from this book and then move on to a bigger book like a Hogarth or a Loomis or something like that to get more get more detail. I mean, it doesn't hurt going either way. I'm, I'm not saying if, if you're learning to draw, it doesn't hurt going from the big fancy book to the, the kind of rough out book that this is. Um, it, it works either way. But again, this this book is all about efficiency for drawing comic books in a comic book in, in the comic book industry. Industry. All right. So here, let's show some examples. Here is uh, looks like a dare. Oh, Black Panther, maybe. Yeah, it's Black Panther. Let's put it in, in view. You can see the rough sketch out stick figure. And there's your basic things your finished project, finished product. And again, same here. You got this. Looks like Captain America. That looks like Captain America doing a kick. Here's your basic stick figure and how it develops into a Captain America. And one more we'll go, we'll look at is a Spider-Man doing. You know, looks like he's jumping the high bar. And there he is. All right. Uh, let's see. Next is for sure. We're not going to go over every single chapter of this book. But I'm going to say it looks like they got drawing faces and stuff like that. So uh, I definitely recommend this book. Uh, like I said, I'm going to go through it again some more and do some more stuff on it. Mm, that was two hours. So I'm going to have to add this to. Oh, I did this two hours for today. So I'm going to have to add it to whatever my last one was. Five and a half hours, so that's we're going on seven point five hours total. We're gonna lo we're logging up all the hours, see how everything turns out, and then in a year we'll see how many hours I did. There we go. The metal. I'm sorry. The metal. The problem is a lot of the data he bases stuff off of is true enough, but he doesn't look at it with any of the philosophical razors. 
Because a lot of the premises would be wrong. Well, yeah. Because he starts he starts every he starts everything with his opinion and then backs and then finds stuff that backs his opinion up. He 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 basically goes to find the facts that uh Right. Yeah, that prove him right and doesn't look at anything that might prove him wrong. All right, before we leave today, I just want to everyone to know that this little square here, I, uh, I put it up on Sween's. I, I, I saved it on his little picture, and I drew a little stick figure of, of his oddity just to, to get one of those little poses down. So that one's for Sween's. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and shut it up, shut it down. Uh, thank you, Metal, for showing up and anybody else that did. I know, I guess, <laughs> like every other time, Ethan's stream started up. He's doing a big uh, – oh, now we got uh, another Friday night auction with Blacklist. So Ethan was doing an auction, and then Blacklist was doing – and now Blacklist is doing an auction. Mike Miller is doing an auction. So that's what, that's why only one person showed up, because all those people were going to come and watch me. But now they're, you know, they're all watching you. They don't love you. No, they, they don't really like me. My followers don't like me. It's okay, because I got a... Uh... <laughs> Actually, uh, I got a couple of uh, people that wanted me to insult them today. So, uh, And they wanted me to insult them while I was doing the stream. So we'll, uh, we'll get on that. All right. So uh, you all have a good day. Uh, remember to follow Sweens. Follow me on Twitter at Indie Dave Comics. Uh, I will put Sweens... Uh, his, uh, his, I just put his Twitter in the comments. Yeah, we put it in the comments, but uh, we'll have it in the uh, in the description as well. All right, so y'all take it easy. Y'all have a good night, and uh, I'll see you later. It's gonna take me a second because I clicked off of the picture. There we go. All right, so y'all have a good night.